everyone, and welcome to TV5 News Live for Wednesday, October 31st. I'm Carrie LaFou. And I'm Pat Grace. In for Jackie Nealon. Here's a look at some of the stories we'll be bringing you this evening. A New York woman was the fourth person to die of inhalation anthrax today. Congress is debating a national sales tax holiday. And Kelly Esno will be joining us live from Main Street with a report on how Halloween is going in the borough. We'll have those stories plus more coming up in the next half hour. Attorney General John Ashcroft has designated 46 organizations as terrorist groups. He is banning the members of those groups from entering the country. Meanwhile, the latest death from anthrax has authorities wondering how a New York City woman contracted the disease. Elaine Keanu has a wrap-up of the day's developments. The administration is expressing condolences for the death of a 61-year-old woman in New York from inhalation anthrax. Now investigators are trying to retrace her steps to figure out how she may have been infected. Authorities are now trying to determine how Kathy Nguyen, an employee at the Manhattan Eye, Ear and Throat Hospital, contracted inhalation anthrax. It's not known if Nguyen actually handled mail, and investigators did not get the chance to interview her before she died. They're trying to determine if she traveled anywhere domestically or foreign, who she may have come into contact with, any of the people that she's associated with. Attorney General John Ashcroft announced tighter security measures for issuing non-immigrant visas and had a warning for foreign terrorists and those who back them. Supporters of terrorism, you are not welcome here. And if you develop that characteristic after you get here, as an alien, you will be asked to leave. Meanwhile, President Bush met with congressional leaders to discuss his economic stimulus package as new figures suggest the economy shrank in the third quarter. The president is pushing Congress to pass his plan by the end of November. Get to work and get something done. The American people expect us to do just that. Overseas, midway into the fourth week of the U.S.-led military action, more heavy bombing of Taliban frontline positions around the Afghan capital of Kabul. And intense strikes continued in the Taliban strongholds of Kandahar and Mazar-e-Sharif. And also on the military front, Defense Secretary Donald Rumsfeld is set to visit Moscow and Central Asia later this week to shore up efforts in the war on terrorism. In Washington, I'm Elaine Quijano. Now back to you. A New York hospital worker died of inhalation anthrax today, and officials are still trying to figure out how she got it. Officials say 61-year-old Kathy Wen died early this morning at Lenox Hill Hospital. She worked in a stock room that sometimes handles mail at the Manhattan Eye, Ear, and Throat Hospital. Preliminary tests have found no trace of anthrax there or at her home. Wen was the fourth person to die from inhalation anthrax this month. Six other people have been diagnosed with that form of anthrax, and six more people have been diagnosed with skin anthrax, the less serious form of the disease. An anthrax scare this morning at San Francisco International Airport proved to be unfounded. A Northwest Boeing 747 was held temporarily at the airport due to concerns that someone on board might be carrying anthrax. Flight 28 and another flight which was held temporarily in Seattle both left Tokyo around the same time from adjacent gates. Some of the passengers originally on board the Seattle flight had transferred to the plane which landed in San Francisco. The FBI questioned two people on the Seattle flight in connection with the anthrax report. The rest of the 200 plus passengers were allowed to proceed to customs. The 170 people on the San Francisco flight were also allowed to move through customs. Delta Airline executives announced today they will only be forced to lay off 2,000 employees. That's because 11,000 of its employees have opted for a one-year voluntary leave or early retirement. Last month, Delta said it would have to cut 13,000 jobs. Most of the layoffs will be pilots. President Bush wants Congress to approve an economic stimulus package and quickly. Speaking today to the National Association of Manufacturers, Mr. Bush urged lawmakers to provide tax relief for individuals and businesses. He said a stimulus package needs to be on his desk by the end of November. Ask me about the economy. They say, are you worried? I say I'm worried anytime anybody loses a job. But in the long term, I'm optimistic about the U.S. economy. We've got good tax policy. We've got low interest rates. We've got the best workers in the world. 
We've got an entrepreneurial spirit that is infectious and strong and alive and well. We are the best place to do business in the entire globe. Also said he hopes Congress will soon be sending him legislation to improve airport security to make the U.S. less dependent on imported oil and pr to promote free trade. Well, last month's attacks on the U.S. damaged an already weak economy. They also led to a halt in consumer spending. We could boot a sales tax holiday. Today, we are proposing an innov innovative way to get Americans back into stores and to get our economy back on its feet. We are proposing a national sales period where everyone can go out and shop without having to pay state sales tax. The national sales tax holiday will save you money on everything, from cars and computers to books and baby clothes. During the holiday, a Pittsburgh icon passed away today after a long battle with cancer. Patty was died this afternoon. TV5's Mark Despotakis joins us now with a look back on Patty's career. Mark? Well, thanks, Pat. Patty Burns is a familiar face and name to anyone who's from Pittsburgh Tech. At her home today at the age of 49. The loss of legendary KK TV news anchor Patty Burns did not come as a shock. We knew of her battle with cancer, but still had hope. She was only 49 years old. Everything from political conventions to meeting the Pope to even anchoring the news with her father. Patty Burns got her start young with her father as she remembered here on KDKA's Pittsburgh Today. Broadcasting because Dad used to take me on a lot of stories with him and I can remember one definitely. That's correct. I was only about 12 years old and what experience that was to go into a state. And Patty went to a political convention with me. Yes, oh, covered that. Right that was quite exciting. Western Pennsylvania felt a special bond with Patty, as did Patty with this area. Evidence of that was shown when Patty recovered from her first health scare. Dad, and it's really, it's, it's been over me, and, and all the notes and the prayers, I can't tell you what it, what it has really meant to me from my, the bottom of my heart. Thank you all so very, very much. Not only are the residents of Western Pennsylvania feeling the loss of Patty Burns, so are her colleagues at KDKA-TV. We've we been spending having her as part of our life as her sense of humor. She was so much fun. And, and the way she would just laugh and things that would happen in commercial breaks. There was one shot they had just a few moments ago that I said, that's Patty. Yeah. That she was just laughing, she was smiling, that warmth. After Patty retired in 1997, she went on to run her own She worked on WQED's public program, On Q. She was survived by her husband, Charles Cohen. Now, for more information about a memorial service for Patty, as well as where contributions can be sent, check out the TV5 website at comdept, that's C-O-M-D-E-P-T, at clarion.edu slash someone that will be missed in all of Pittsburgh television, and I think she's been quite an influence uh, on this uh, young journalist. Uh, I remember Patty and Daddy. That was what it was uh, when I was growing up, and I, we were talking with the Krulaberg, and I remember watching The Price is Right on, on KDK in Pittsburgh, and then you would <coughs> Patty was really what a journalist should be. She was someone who was involved in her community. She was part of the community. She wasn't just someone reporting on it. She was part of it. Patty Burns certainly will be missed tonight. Pizza Dead. Fox's Pizza Dead is located on Old Route 66 in Clarion and offers all day delivery. Phone 226 5555. That's 226 5555. Fox's Pizza Dead is open seven days a week for your convenience. Old Route 5555. Would you have some TV5 news anchors provided by Fashion Bug? Located in the Clarion Mall. Whether you're looking for junior trendy, girls, or fashion for women, they have it all. 
with many different styles. Fashion Bug, Fashion Bug is located in McLarion Mall, just off of Exit 9 of Interstate 80. Open Monday through Saturday, 10 a.m. till 9 p.m. and Sunday from noon till 5. This portion of the program is located off of Exit 9 of Interstate 80. Clarion Hospital offers outpatient services, transitional care, as well as an emergency room open around the clock every day of the year. More than 400 employees in any position work to serve the community. Call the Clarion Hospital at 226-9500. Clarion Hospital providing health care in the surrounding communities since 94. Do you want complete coverage of local, state, national, and international news as it happens? Good evening, everyone, and welcome to TV5 News Live. From the world's new leader, CNN, complete coverage of the day's events. With advanced satellite capabilities, TV5 News can bring you the latest news as it happens. So tune in every Tuesday, Wednesday, and Thursday for Clarence's very own TV5 News Live. Welcome back. A forum will be held to discuss the current atmosphere in America. The program titled, After September 11th, Arabs, Afghans, Americans, and Anthrax. Factual claims will range from bioterrorism to UN policy. Each discussion will be led by a Clarion University professor. The public dialogues will begin with session one at 3.30 tomorrow afternoon. The final session will begin at 6.30. <laughs> TV5's very own Kelly Esno is on Main Street where the Halloween parade took place. Kelly? Thank you, Carrie. I'm here on Main Street where just moments ago a Halloween day parade took place where children have to go to the play hall. Speaking little children, I have two here with me. Hi. What's your name? Jake. And yours? May. And what is your costume? I'm Freddie Jones from Scooby Doo. And yours? Princess Alina. Princess Alina. Did you guys get a lot of candy? About started. <laughs> you only got two bags. Two bags. <laughs> Are you having fun? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Well, have a happy Halloween. Happy and safe Halloween. Okay. Thank you. Happy Halloween. <laughs> happy Halloween. I gotta be sweet. <laughs> For TV5, I'm Kelly S. Now back to you. Thanks, Kelly. Because of the events of September 11th, Halloween will be a bit different in many cities this year. Robin Simmons reports on how trick-or-treaters celebrated the holiday in Miami. The events of Halloween are going to look different at the annual block party that packs the Grove. This year, we're going to make sure they don't have certain things. No water pistols, no swords, no snakes, none of those things that have been disruptive forces in the past. So, even if you found the perfect military on any other makeup for costume tips, the usual safety tips, like painted faces instead of masks and flame-retardant costumes, are augmented by some new candy concerns. There is uh, some form of powdery candies that are always given out to kids, and uh, there are a lot of reasons, but yes, and the kids can definitely do that kind of sugar. Among all the trick-or-treaters all over South Florida, expect to see another group what we're trying to do is we're trying to put people at ease. Have your fun, live the world, you say. That was Robin Simmons reporting. Stay with us. TV5 News Live has more to come. For security, hi. NASA is preparing for next month's shuttle launch. And a jury has been selected in the case of a suspected man accused of conducting a shooting spree earlier this year. We'll have the details. So look, my screen.
The tools needed to rebuild lives after a disaster aren't always hammers and nails. The tools needed to give warmth to the homeless are missing. When lives need rebuilding, the tools exist that come from the heart. Donate online or call 1-800-SALARMY. <laughs> But nearly half of today's military, uh, they can't answer our nation's call to employers' support. If you're an employer, visit ESGR.org and find out how to do your part. After all, their response depends on yours. Even more security is in place by the time Endeavor is launched on November 29th. Jury selection is complete in a Pittsburgh mass shooting suspects case. Attorneys selected 12 jurors and four alternates for 41-year-old Ronald Taylor's trial. The suburban Pittsburgh oh. is a monkey rampage. Four people were at fast food restaurants. Two fatally. Ta Taylor's attorneys don't deny he shot the victims, but say he's mentally ill. The sun was out and the temperatures were warm. How long will this Indian summer weather stick around? Do you have a little forecast? Stephanie? Terry? Terry and Terry? I'm going to start off with a pretty rainy day. It turned out to be a pretty blue day and a pretty sunny day. With temperatures near 60, it's a very, very, it's a very nice day. As you can see, there are clouds in the other portion of Pennsylvania. Which is how you move off to our north. And there's all of the mark lakes just until at least tomorrow into Friday. But today we saw showers in the morning, but these showers right here were at the it's not proportionate to say we are right at the edge of the cloud cover, so the clouds were pushed off by late morning, which made it for a pretty nice day. But today we are at the very edge of a high pressure system, of a high pressure system that moved off tomorrow, warmer temperatures, and also the cloud cover. So there will be no more cloud cover for the rest of this evening and then through tomorrow. But as you can see, there was still a band of showers right along through central and western Pennsylvania today and throughout the Great Lakes. That we saw this that we saw this morning high pressure system that clear today the one that's coming right along tomorrow. So tomorrow's floor looks like a partly sunny day with highs in the sixties again. It's gonna be one more nice day until the weekend. So for tomorrow it looks like high of sixty three and partly sunny. Friday cooling off to sixty one with the sun. Sunday it looks like the skies and skies and forties on Monday, so things are gonna cool off by the beginning next week. Have a good trick or treating night. Happy Halloween. Back to you, Pat and Carrie. TV5 News Live has more to come. When we return, Tyler Zorger will be here with uh, the TV Sports Report. Hey, look, Doc Barrett on Wall Street today. Just getting going. On September 11th, America faced terrorist attacks of the worst kind. Innocent lives were lost, and a sad cloud was cast over this great nation. These acts were intended to cause fear among all Americans, including our kids. There are things we can do to help our kids. Talk with them. Listen to them. Tell them they're safe and that they're loved. God bless you, and God bless America. It may not look like it, but 
you're watching this. It's made from materials you've been recycling. But to keep recycling working, you need to buy products that say, made from recycled materials. For all those next in line, it would mean the world to them. If you take algebra, geometry, and calculus, you need to know how math can improve your future. Demand it. Call NACME. We'll tell you. Tyler Zorger now joins us with the TV5 Sports Report. President Bush threw out the first game in the... Th er, the <laughs> Last night at Yankee Stadium, George W. Bush did receive the first pitch, and when he received a thunderous cheer, he stood on the mound to deliver the ceremonial pitch of the third game of the World Series. Our president and... Former owner, part owner of the Texas Rangers, then make a long story. He's finally overcame the Diamondbacks with a two to one win at home. The Diamondbacks dug themselves a hole that they couldn't bring themselves out of, and the winning run was scored when Scott Brocious shattered his bat and drove the ball into shallow left field. But is it too soon to jump back on the Yankee bandwagon? Many say it is, with the dynamic duo of the Diamondbacks being rested and ready to pitch. The fourth game of the World Series is held tonight on Fox. Now on to the news that everybody is talking about. Yes, I am talking about Michael Jordan, the legendary icon. Last night, the New York Knicks faced off against the Washington Wizards. The Knicks spoiled Jordan's return, to say the least. His airness wasn't himself last night. He was double team most of the night. But like I've said before, it's going to take a little bit of time for Jordan to get back into the swing of his game. And also tonight, the big game in Pennsylvania in the NHL is Pittsburgh versus Philadelphia. This is going to be one of the first chances for the young Penguin team to step up and show us how they can do against the cross-state rival. In other words, edition of TV5 News, and now we go back to Kelly and Pat. For this edition of TV5 News Live, Susan Honorad and Jackie Nealon will join you again tomorrow evening with Clarion's very own TV5 News Live at 8. Until then, I'm Pat Grace. And I'm Terry LaPoo. For everyone here at TV5, good night.